Let us gather together in the shelter the Lord's word provides. Let us pray. Lord, gather us in with Christ Jesus' prayers as he prayed for us all and called to you, Father. We ask that we might do the same. As we pray in his name, Lord, we pray for the state of our suffering. But if it is your will, O Lord, that we endure this struggle, we only pray for patience and perseverance, that we may do your will and bring glory to your name. O Lord God, hear our prayers for others, for those wandering out of sight and out of the light of your word, who travel and travail in darkness. Lord, set forth your church as emissaries into all places of this earth where your light still needs to shine, into dark corners of our own souls where we hide our way and will from your own. Lord, be bright and more blazing than the sun. For we look with everlasting hope to you for that everlasting day when we are gathered in your kingdom where we'll dwell in the light which emanates from your glory and makes the stars seem dim. Lord, we pray for the wisdom we need in this day, that this day might be the day on which we bring your praise in all we do. May we glorify you, O God. Give our children joy and take down the barriers that have kept them from fun and adventure and the learning that is a part of every moment of life. Lord, may they learn how to work and serve in this kingdom and yet not become the world, falling into temptations. Lord, help us to be better examples of discipline and diligence and humility in the lessons we are ready to relearn from the honesty and innocence of those who are encountering life with openness and awe. Bless us, O Lord, with the healing power, the noble spirit, and the guidance and faith that the outpouring of love be through your disciples and ministers of faith, as you call us each to be. All this in Christ we pray. Amen. Today's readings from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew, reading in chapter 11 at verse 25. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither man knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Too smart for our own good. If I want to pick out one common trait among all the villains in all the books and the comics and the, and the movies that I've ever seen, will be that ultimately it seems that the villains outsmart themselves and are caught by their own genius. It's a character flaw that humanizes all of these villains. But it also tells uh, something important about our own tendency to sin in the overthinking of a situation. Not that I'm ever saying it's a sin to think. But the reason things out so far in that the answer becomes exactly what we want it to be. And we end up complicating what God has already sorted out for us. The straight forward truths and morals found in parables are not hard to understand. I can read them to a group of grade schoolers. Try this with the children in your life. And before I get to Jesus' explanation, they can pretty well tell me what the lesson is most of the time. What they don't understand of these simple lessons is why we as a church for so long struggle with the ability to apply these to our living to our faith. From the prodigal son to the clever steward or the wicked tenants, our society has struggled in the messages of forgiveness, prudence, honor, and responsibility. In all we do, in praise and devotion, let us also share our understanding of these simple truths that the world has forgotten to be the example of trustworthiness, of honor, respect, compassion, and love as a witness of faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. And by so doing, we share in this prayer that he offered. And the prayers that we offer become a sharing of Christ's love again. Amen.